If you looked at the thumbnail for this video and thought, I can't paint that, I want to encourage you. Yes, you can. And I'm going to show you how in a few simple steps that when they're all put together, will create something that looks much more complicated than it actually is. And if you don't believe me, just paint the first one with me and see how it goes. Welcome back, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. And today we are painting Christmas gift tags. I am using the Saunders Waterford St. Cuthbert's Mill paper, which I'll of course link everything below. But I chose this one today because it's an off-white color. And I just thought that that would add a nice rustic feel to our artwork. And especially with using the jute ties, I just think that'll look really nice. I've already cut it down. I'm going to make each card three by five. And so we have five on this little stretch right here, which I just thought it would just be easier to work with if we keep it in this little strip. And I pre-cut or pre-punched the holes so that we can avoid that area. I've, I just think it's easier to know exactly where that hole is going to go. This may seem like a large gift tag size, but this is original artwork that we're placing on this gift. So I really want to showcase that artwork and it leaves a nice space on the back for you to write a personal message. You can just put to and from if you want, but if you're giving this to a grandparent or a parent or somebody special, you might want to put a little extra personal note, which I like to do sometimes. So this gives plenty of room to do that. Okay, the colors that we are using this is sap green, olive green, green gold, and undersea green. Then this is Windsor red, raw sienna, burnt sienna, Van Dyke brown, and just a touch of sepia. And those, well, we will need white, but we're going to talk about that later after we really get to it. So the first one I want to paint is a Christmas tree or an evergreen tree. And there are a lot of different ways you can paint a tree, but this is just the way that I like painting them. So you can paint it any way you want to paint it. So this also helps give me a visual for where the center is. I'm going to start with sap green because that's really going to be our lighter green. And I don't think I'm not going to put a star on this yet, or I'm not going to put a star on it at all because I'm going to put it in a burlap bag. If your tree's in a burlap bag, it's probably has not been decorated yet. <laughs> so I'll start it about right here. And I'm just going to do these little wispy strokes. And actually, I think I might go to this Silver Ultra Mini. Let's try that one. The silver brush was doing a good job, but let's just try this one out. And we're just going to make these little, little hash marks all the way down, getting larger and larger as we go. And you don't want them all the same, you know, make them different, different lengths. And before this dries, I'm going to reach over here and grab some of my green gold and put a little bit of that in there so that they, those colors can mix. Just a little bit. And we'll come back in a minute and do more. But just while this first layer is wet. I want to get a few strokes in there with with every color. Now 
be careful that you don't get too wide. You kind of have to predict, okay, how far down are you going to go with it? And we're, we're going to put a burlap bag right here. So we want to leave room for that. So you can always make it wider, but you cannot make it skinnier. Okay, now I'm, I want to put a little bit of a trunk on there, so I am going to use the Van Dyke Brown to do just a little bit of a trunk. And then now I'm going to take a very small filbert and the raw sienna. So this bag has a little bit of that excess up top and we're going to put a ribbon on it and now just do a little circle however you want and it doesn't have to be perfect because this is a root ball so it's not going to be a perfect circle anyway it would be very lopsided and now I'm going back while it's still wet with burnt sienna to start adding in some shadows you know it would be dirty and i've added a little bit of sepia just a touch of sepia to my burnt sienna and i'm not completely covering it because i want some texture all kinds of colors in here And another thing I like to do sometimes is take something kind of sharp and put some scratches on it. And when that dries, we'll come back and put a ribbon on it and do the shadow. Okay, I'm just going to touch this up a little bit. I think we could use a little more dark green on our tree. And I want to add a little bit darker little textures in here. So I'm just taking an old brush and squishing it down with some Van Dyke Brown on it. And now for the finishing touch, we need a little bow and the cording that they would have used to tie this tree. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on the brown. That did okay. And of course we have to have Tails. I'm 
Okay. Next, let's do some mistletoe. Okay, again, we're going to have a bow up here, so we want to be sure to leave room for that. Let's start about right here. And we'll just draw some, some little branches off. Now for the leaves on the mistletoe, I'm using a small filbert and we want to use a lot of different colors of green so that they'll all stand out rather than blending together. So I'm taking my sap green and just adding, I'm using the side of the filbert. So I will just fill in a few and then grab a different color green. Let's take some olive green mixed in with that sap green. Oops. That was a bit much. To give a little bit different color. Now let's go, let's see, what do we have? Let's go something a little darker. How about deep sap green? That's a good one. I did not have that on my original palette, but that's okay. I'll just add it in there. And as soon as these start drying, I'll start crossing over some colors. I could probably do that right there. I'll cross over with the darkest color, undersea green. Our green is still wet, so I will come back and finish up the berries after that is dry because I don't want the green to bleed into that red because it will overpower it so much. And the bow, don't stress over the bow, just do two simple little loops and put little tails on them. That's all you really need. And to do the darker parts, I just put a little drop of sepia in with that red and that makes the perfect darker tone to go with this. Okay, next I wanna do a stocking and fill it with a teddy bear and some greenery. So just going to kind of guesstimate here the size. And you don't really have to stress about getting the stocking perfect. The stocking is filled with goodies. So if your edges are not completely smooth or straight, that's even better. It really doesn't matter. The stocking's going to be bulging anyway, so don't stress about it. If it's a little lopsided, it's okay. And we're going to add some white for the top, but we'll let this dry first. We could move on and do, I wanna do a hot chocolate mug right here. So for the cup, there's no need to stress about the cup. Just do a very slight curve for the top, then straight sides, and a slight curve at the bottom. And then just put a handle on it. Keep it simple. I need some pretty thick white to cover up that deep red. So I am going to use some Winsor & Newton Titanium White Acrylic. Just because that's really what I have on hand. Uh, I do have some gouache, but I don't think gouache is gonna be quite thick enough 
to cover that up. I've tried it and it's not covering like I want it and I need to clean that top. Now, there we go. So I am going to take, this plate actually has gouache on it, but I'm going to take this old brush that's very stiff. This is an acrylic brush. And I just let a little water mix in with it. And I'm just going to just spread it around a little bit. I thought it would be nice if it were real textured and the acrylic will make it very textured. And now I'm going to use that same acrylic white and put some foam on top of our, our hot chocolate. And the hardest part of all these tags is probably going to be the teddy bear. So the raw sienna will work really well for this and just do an oval. So this little oval is the muzzle and we want that to dry before we move on to the rest of it. And while we wait for that, I'm going to add the hot chocolate in our mug. And now for the teddy bear, draw a larger oval around the muzzle part with most of it being above the muzzle and rounded square ears. You see, I'm just drawing it and then filling it in. And then we're going to do the little body part, just a couple of curved lines and then fill that in. And so the, the fur on the stocking is going to cover up most of him so this is really pretty easy and then just put two little arms out to the side now I'm just kind of darkening it up a little bit and that's all there is to it so when you take it in small steps like that it's much easier and now I'm going back over with the acrylic just to make sure that he has good coverage on him and he does look like he's inside that stocking and then I'll take Actually, sepia is what I'm using, not black, but sepia, to do a little nose and eyes and a little mouth. And we're just going to do some greenery poking out, just like we did the tree. Very tiny little hash marks in various colors. Super, super easy. And I'm also going to put some berries in here. Another very Christmassy, easy element. Just first going to get this dark and redefine the branches there. And now let's do some berries. So I've taken Van Dyke Brown to do the branch and the same red that we've been using and just do some berries. Easy, easy. And now I'm just scribbling some Van Dyke Brown and sepia mixture onto the edge, the rim of the cup there for some chocolate syrup and putting a little chocolate drizzle on the whipped cream. And then I decided to do a candy cane. So I've kind of very lightly drawn out a candy cane just to give me something to follow with my stripes. And then when it dries, I will erase those. And then I decided that looked kind of lonely by itself. So I'm putting a little cinnamon stick in here as well. And now that the stocking is dry, I'm going to add a little shadowing underneath with that same sepia and red mixture 
and some little folds and, and bulging on the stocking. Just to give it a little bit more of a 3D effect. And a little shadow. And that looks pretty good. Just touch up a few little berries. And then put my details on the cinnamon stick. And I'm going to put some little snowflakes on the mug. I'm going to do a Christmas ornament right here. So I've watered down like very, very watery, some white gouache and a little touch of our red. And I've just covered it onto our ornament and we need to let that dry. For the gold parts of our ornament, I am using Sminky's Aqua Bronze Rich Gold. This is a powder and it gets all over everything. So you want to be careful with it. So I'll put it in this little dish and then I'm also using a separate water dish to rinse my brush because if I were to use the same water rinsing water that I'm using with my watercolors, then this these little gold pieces get all in the water and it's really hard to get out. You know, I can rinse and rinse and rinse my, my water dish and still for months later, I have little gold pieces everywhere. So I've just found that it's easier to have something disposable to rinse my brush in. And it comes out of the brush pretty easily. Especially if you have trouble, you can just put a little brush soap on it and it comes right out. I don't know why I have trouble with it in my water jar, but not with my brush. So we're going to use this gold to paint the top of the ornament and the chain or the cord for the ornament. So that's just basically a little rectangle. And then I'm going to loop it all the way around our hole punch just for the fun of it. And now this is a very, very easy decoration. I'm just going to take the red and do a bunch of squiggly lines and let that dry. And I'll do the same thing with white in a minute. But now that our acrylic is dry on the stocking, I'm adding just very small shadows to that white area using a little bit of watered down sepia. And now I'm adding the white and you could actually take the gold and do little lines on it as well. Now, in case you don't know the difference in there's a, a permanent white gouache and a zinc white gouache. So the difference is the zinc is good for mixing, but the permanent is more for like covering up. It's more opaque. I just thought I would point that out. I did not understand that in the beginning. And then I would try to mix paints with the white gouache and it would never turn out right. So that's why I'm bringing that up. The zinc does a really good job of mixing with other colors so that it doesn't dull that that finish that that pigment the opaque if you mix it with the colors it will really dull your color so i use that mainly for cover-up which i could have used it for all of the white areas here a whipping cream and the stocking fur but I just wanted something a little thicker and with more texture, like the acrylic. I'm 
Okay. We're finished. So now all we need to do is put our jute on for our ties. And either before you do this or after, it's a good idea to spray your tags with a sealant, especially because people are going to be touching them and they'll be on a package. You really don't know what's going to happen if something were to spill on it. This way your artwork is protected. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. And please leave me some comments and let me know how that went for you. And if you did paint along with me, post them on Instagram using the hashtag paintingwithbela so that I can comment on your work. And as always, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more really great watercolor videos coming up real soon. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next week.